In this lesson, we're going to talk about the introduction of your speech and why it's so important to really nail the introduction and have the most effective introduction that you possibly can. The introduction is arguably the most important part of your speech. This is the part of your speech where you have to gain your audience's attention and interest. And really, if you fail to capture your audience's attention from the get-go of your speech, it's going to be very difficult to recapture their attention later on. That's one of the reasons that the introduction is so important. You need to capture your audience's attention from the off so that they make so that you make sure that they pay attention throughout your entire speech. And the first major purpose of your introduction is to gain your audience's attention. And there's going to be a lot of different devices that we'll talk about that will be used to gain your audience's attention. Once you've gained their attention, you have to then state the purpose of your speech. This is where things like your specific purpose and your thesis statement are going to come in handy. And really, this is where you tell your audience what your speech is all about. In addition to this, in the introduction, you're going to want to establish your credibility on the topic that you've chosen. Now, the concept of credibility can be understood through the ideas of, con of competence, trustworthiness, and caring and goodwill towards the audience. So first, your audience will be looking at you and deciding whether you are credible based on your competence of the information. Basically, they're going to be wondering whether or not you know your topic well enough to be able to teach it to them. This is the degree to which a speaker is perceived to be knowledgeable or an expert in a given topic. And so, in order to establish your credibility, you have to let your audience know why you are competent to speak on this topic. Perhaps you have many years experience in this topic. For example, if you were a Boy Scout and you're giving an informative speech about the Boy Scouts, you would then use your experience as a Scout as your competence. If you are not an expert in your field, if you don't have experience, you will of course use the research that you've done to demonstrate your competence. In addition to competence, your audience is going to be looking at your trustworthiness. And this is the degree to which an audience member perceives a speaker as honest. And in reality, if, a speak or if an audience member decides that they can't trust you, they're not going to listen to you, and they're going to see everything that comes out of your mouth as deceptive or untrustworthy. And finally, in their assessment of your credibility, your audience is going to be looking whether you care about them, if you have goodwill towards the audience. So, caring and goodwill is the degree to which an audience member perceives a speaker as caring about that audience member. We are only going to listen to people that we think have our best interests at heart. So, one of your jobs in the introduction is to establish that you have your audience's best interests at heart. And remember that credibility is entirely in the eye of the beholder. The amount of credibility that you have exists individually within each of your audience members. So you have to show them your competence, your trustworthiness, as well as your caring and goodwill in order to be perceived as credible. In addition to all of this, you have to provide your audience with reasons to listen. This is the fourth major function of your introduction. And you have to explicitly state within your speech why this topic matters to your audience. Tell them why they should spend the next six to eight minutes listening to you give your speech about whatever topic this is. If you don't provide your audience with a reason to listen, with a reason why this affects them, they're probably not going to listen to you. And finally, in the introduction, you have to preview your main ideas. In other words, give us a sneak peek of what your three main points are going to be. That way, your audience knows what you're going to talk about first, what you're going to talk about second, and what you're going to talk about third. It gives them a way to keep track of where you are in the speech, and it gives them a method to organize the information and really be able to follow along and understand the to your topic the way that you intend them to. So these are the five things that we need to do in our introduction in order to have the most effective introduction that we possibly can. 